Hi, I'm John Scholl, president of Service Quality Institute. The purpose of this video is to help you learn how to get started and to be successful selling our technology, our products. So if you become a consultant or distributor, there's a few things that you need to do in order to be successful to get rolling. The first of all, once you've signed up, you have to have a signed agreement, you have to make your payments, and then you select the product you want. So a distributor gets eight core programs of their choice, 300 participant kits. A consultant gets 100 participant kits in four core programs. So you have to work with, with our team to select the product that's going to work best for you. Once you get the product, you also have to send us the contact information you want on our website. That means your name, your email address, your cell phone, your address, and make it complete if you want people from your country or your market area to contact you. And then the next step is that you've got to start going through the programs. And the faster you go through them, the better. So I would recommend that you take a participant book, and as you read the book, take a highlighter and highlight all the key ideas. Your goal is to get grounded so you understand the product. Go through the leader's guide and watch the video at the same time. So when it says stop the video, you will go to the leader's guide, you read the next steps, you look at the participant material. So, for example, feelings is implemented in three sessions of, of three to four hours each, but each video is about 21, 22 minutes long. So to go through feelings is probably going to take you to really comprehend all the materials, maybe four hours, okay? But you want to grasp the program. And then the second thing I would encourage you to do is to take the brochure for each product that you have and highlight or underline all the key ideas in the brochure because it has all the benefits. If, if you understood everything in the brochure for each product, you really got it down pat. Now you have to go through the product so you emotionally and intellectually understand the product. Now why do I talk about this? Because we have some people that sign up, they get the product and they wait six months to go through it. It is crazy. The day you get the product, every day, you should go through a new program. So if you're a distributor, you got eight core programs, eight days in a row, you go through one program. If you're a consultant, four programs, four days in a row. Now, the corporate brochure is one of your most important brochures. And uh, I would encourage you to use this because it's, you know, visualize you go into a restaurant. You've never been in there before. And you sit down and the waitress gives you a, a, bro a menu. This is the menu. And if you look at the front part of this menu, it says the global leader in helping organizations keep customers build market share and improve the performance in the entire workforce by developing a culture of delivering superior customer service. It doesn't say training. It doesn't say the global leader in training. <clears throat> if you want to be successful, sell strategy. And every time you use the word training in an email, a phone call, or in a presentation uh, by, let's say, email, it's as bad as using the four-letter F word. It is the kiss of death. Okay, you will lose the customer because you call up the CEO and he says, man, I got excited. I'm working with Service Quality Institute now and I understand you got 800 employees in your company and I'd like to come in and talk to you about our training programs. And he says, fantastic. I need you to talk to Susie. Susie is in charge of HR. And she makes all the decisions related to training. If you've ever played Monopoly, what you did is you just landed on jail, you bypass goal, and you go straight to jail. It, you're dead. You're dead. Okay? Never, ever, ever, ever use the word training. It's the single worst word that you could use because it sends you to HR which is going to deep six you and send you to hell and back, okay? So if, and by the way, in order to sell our products, you'd better learn how to call the CEO. If you can't get in to see the CEO, don't waste your time because unless you want practice presentations. So, uh, and I would always recommend you start with small companies first. 
20 employees, 30 employees. There's thousands of companies that got 15, 20, or 30 employees. If you went through the first 20 companies and you screwed up your presentation every time, who cares? There's thousands more companies that you can call on. If you took your 20 best customers, the biggest companies in your country, and you blow the first 20 presentations, you're screwed. You're dead. Okay? It's very expensive. So start with small companies. Then the other thing that I'd like you to do is as fast as possible find some small companies where you can facilitate the program. Your profit margin should be close to 90%. When you are going to facilitate a program, you never charge for materials. You never charge for your facilitation time. Never. You charge a per person fee. So if they got 20 employees, you might say we charge $125 USD per person. You can charge less, you can charge more, okay? Your cost of goods is peanuts. But if you say the materials are $21 a person and I charge $1,000 a day for training and then I, uh, uh, you're dead. I'm not going to pay you $1,000 a day for training. You're crazy. You could get $2,000 a day if you charge a per person fee. So now the next thing is when you make a sales call on a company, how you bring your product is very important. I've seen people bring paper bags. I was recently where somebody brought it in a box. Uh, sometimes people bring ketchup on their materials. They got scratches and scars on it. Uh, they take the product and they just throw it into the trunk. Well, think of jewelry. Think of you going into a very expensive jewelry store and you're looking for diamonds and expensive watches. They probably lay it out on a nice velvet piece of clink. They don't just throw it out on the counter. Well, that's sometimes what we do with our product. So you need to have an attractive suitcase, an attractive carrying case that you carry your product with. Uh, I get, <clears throat> you know, it's really important. Now, the, the next thing is that most of our channel partners don't want to bring any product. It's just too much work. So visualize, you go into the jewelry store and there's nothing in the store. Because it's too much work every morning to put the jewelry out. Because, you know, insurance forces you to put it away at night. Well, you're not going to sell much jewelry. So if you want to sell our product, you've got to have it there for show and tell. When you are calling on the customer, you've got to bring all of the products with you. This is, for example, feelings. So when you present that material, you would have all of your videos with you, and you open it up and you pass it out. If there's six people in the room, you just pass it around. You open up session two, you say this is a, one of the components we use is video. You pass it around. You open up the third video and you pass it to different people. You keep moving all the stuff around. And then you say we have a user-friendly leader's guide. This is designed, you said you had 800 employees and you got 40 locations. So we would want to have at least 40 facilitators trained to run this program. Your facilitators need three skills, enthusiasm, peer respect, and a belief in service. And you have to have this material with you. This is our leader's guide. Each of the 40 facilitators will get this leader guide. In our train the trainer seminar that we're going to do, which means you, we will teach your people how to implement the program. And we teach your facilitators to never answer a question. Because the best facilitator says, Mike, that's a good question, but Chris, how would you respond to that? And Joe, Joe, you're, you're not going to buy into what he just said, are you, Joe? That's what a good facilitator does. You never answer the question, which means you don't need to know nothing. Okay? And then when it goes to session one, the, the leader's guide teaches you what to do. It's got a verbatim script. And when it says turn on the video, you have to have the ability, the talent, and the skill to push the button. Okay? And then when the video says turn off the video, everybody in the room has seen that. You, again, have to have the ability to turn off the video. And you pass the leader's guide around. And then we, have, uh, we store some of the participant materials inside the leader's guide. And so we have a little technique card to reinforce the message. You pass it around. We have a certificate of completion. 
for every participant. It's probably the most important thing to the employee. We pass it around. And then we have a performance standard that measures the behavior that we're teaching. And then most importantly, we have a participant book, which is gorgeous. Now, why do we bring this product? Because the packaging of our material is a 10. If you were to go into any company and you say, let me see the materials that you've used in the last five or ten years to build and develop your people on customer service, the packaging will usually be, at most, a one. So we give everybody a participant book. They read the book in preparation for session two. They read more of the book in preparation for session three, and they complete all the exercises. Then you pass the book around. Okay. Visualize if you went into the Apple store and they're absolutely gorgeous and they don't have the stuff cluttered, they don't have iPhones on top of each other or watches sitting on top of each other. It's just stunning, okay? Well, you are in the show and tell business. If you want to sell, you got to have the product with you. You know, if you went into a car dealership and there's no cars in the lot, you're not going to go into the dealership. If you go into a computer store and there's no computers in the store, you're not going to even go in the store. If you're going to go into a shoe store and there's no shoes, you're not going to buy any shoes. So you've got to have the product with you for show and tell. When you're with a customer, ideally you want to have a variety of people in that presentation. The owner and three or four of their key people. It could be the vice president of operations, the vice president of finance, the vice president of marketing. You could even have HR or somebody from training sitting in there. See, when the CEO gets excited, he says, this is good stuff. I really like it. HR people got their finger up in the air, wondering which way the wind is blowing. And when the CEO gets excited, they get excited. But if you don't have them in the room, is the CEO goes back to him a day later and says, hey, I got this material from Service Quality Institute. It's really good. And the training person is probably going to say, it sucks. I don't like it. It's too simple. It's too complex. Whatever it is, okay? Because they have no speed and no urgency. Now, in that presentation, there's three questions that I'd like to see you always ask immediately. And always take notes. If you don't take notes, you're not a professional. If you want to see the doctor, they're constantly taking notes. All that stuff's in the computer. So there's three questions. Number one, how many employees you got? Very important. Tells you the scope. He might say, I got 15 employees, or I got 1,500 employees, or I got 8,000 employees. Second question is, how many locations do you have and where are they? You're not interested in the street address, but if he says, I got 40 locations and they're throughout the entire country, it tells you a lot. And then the third question is, what is your employee turnover rate? And then they're going to hesitate. And they're going to say, well, I'm, I, I don't know. So what you might say is the typical turnover rate in a company like yours is 25%. Is that higher or lower than you have? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it's 22%. Okay. So people are very embarrassed about the employee turnover rate. So why are those three questions important? If a company has, let's say, 300 employees and they got 10 locations and they got a 25% employee turnover rate, it tells you the scope of the program. They're not going to let you to train 300 people. They got 10 locations. It would cost a lot of money to fly you around to all those 10 locations. So you're going to need at least 10 facilitators, one at each location, that you will train to facilitate each of the programs. And uh, because the employee turnover rate is high, they're going to have to keep training all the new people. And that's another reason why the service culture plan is effective because we do not charge for employee turnover. The higher the employee turnover, the less likely a company is to train and develop their staff. Because people are moving like this and the guy says, hold it, by the time I train this employee, he's going to be gone. Or if I train him, he's going to leave to go to work somewhere else. So companies are very reluctant about employee turnover. So those are the three questions, and if you ever call one of our staff at Service Quality Institute, we're going to ask you those three questions. It takes you only a minute to two minutes to get that information out of a customer. And then what you want to do is start asking some probing questions. If there's no need, if there's no want, there will be no buy. So are you interested, Mr. Prospect, in creating a service culture? Shut up and listen. When you ask a question... Shut up and listen. 
most times a salesperson answers their own question because the customer waited 15 seconds. And so we immediately answer it ourselves. Don't ask questions if you don't want the answer. And if a guy says something, you might say, can you expand on that? And you need to be taking notes constantly because you're going to forget 90% of what this is. And you can't say, when I leave the office, I'll put all those notes down. No, you got to do it when you're in the presentation with the, with the customer. You're looking for hot things. You're looking for needs and wants. You're looking for what I call the dominant buy motive. Where's the pain? No pain, no buy. Okay. And one of the questions I like to ask is how would you rate your customer service today, 10 being the very best, 1 being the very worst, and you're going to be honest. Now, some people will level with you and they say we're a 4 or a 5. Some people will say we're an 8 or a 9. Okay? And then you could ask, how about your competition? Being honest, how would you rate your competition? So let's say the company comes in and says we're a 5, and our competition is a 6. <clears throat> Financially, what's the impact of that? If you could move from a five to a seven, financially, what would be the impact? How important would that be? And then another question I ask is, uh, over the last five or ten years, are there any customer service initiatives that you've used to train and develop your staff? You said you got a thousand employees. Keep asking questions, asking questions. Why are we here today? What would you like to accomplish in this presentation of mine today? In order to, how important is creating a service culture to your organization? Of all the things I discussed so far today, is there one or two things that really makes your heart go jump, jump, jump? Beat faster, quicker. Okay? Ask questions and listen. Ask questions and listen. Write down the questions. You don't want to ask about the ball game. What you're after are you got a very limited time, you got to probe, you got to look for wants and needs, then you use it in your presentation. So if a guy says, I got 600 employees, I got 22 locations, and I got an employee turnover rate of 30%, you should be using that throughout your presentation. And then if he told you about some pain, maybe he says the biggest problem we got is handling irate customers. Well, then talk first about handling irate customers, the program we have. So in selling, always take notes. We use software called ACT, which allows us to put all the data down on a customer so that we can, because otherwise you're going to forget. And, and uh, you always have to take notes during the presentation. I find that if I don't take notes, I forget. Okay? And that's, so your goal is to sell benefits. So we'd love to work with you as a channel partner. We need you to be successful. See, if you make sales and you make money, we make money. If you don't make any sales, we don't make any money. Okay, so it's our benefit to help you become more successful. Now, when you use the process, and I would encourage you to look at the service culture video that we have, uh, I find that 95% of companies like the concept of creating a service culture. So I use the graph and I show all the different programs and I, you know, just watch the video and you'll see what we do. And then watch it 10 or 20 times so you can do the same thing. I'm not going to use a PowerPoint presentation. I'm not going to go ask a company, by the way, do you have a, a meeting room that we can have a PowerPoint presentation? Do you have a computer? Do you have a PowerPoint project? No! I use a whiteboard or I'll use my yellow legal pad, a paper, okay? I'm holding the people's attention. That's how you sell the concepts. <clears throat> so you can, they can buy the service culture plan. Or they could buy individual items off the menu. You need to know your pricing. So if a guy says, you know, I'm, I got a thousand employees, I'm interested in feelings, what's the price? And you say, well, I'll have to get back to you, I don't know. Oh my God. You need to know the prices. Bring your retail price sheet with you. Don't bring your wholesale price sheet with you. That's another pet peeve of mine. Oh my God. You. Channel partners bring their wholesale price sheets with them, and they leave them laying around. Why in the heck would you ever tell a company your wholesale pricing? They're going to work you over. They're going to be, they're going to want part of the action. So you just quote uh, the fees because you got your retail price sheet. 
Uh, by the way, I own the company and I don't know the prices. So I always have price sheets next to me. I always bring prices with me. Okay. And I'm willing to give that to a customer if they want the retail pricing because everything is based on volume. So at Service Quality Institute, would love to work with you. We want you to be successful. Uh, the faster you facilitate a program, the closer you're going to get to seeing the, the power of each program. I don't care if you make money or don't make money when you facilitate your first programs because you're going to be a little bit nervous. You're going to be scared. Okay, But every time you facilitate a program, you get better and better and better. Okay, Your profit margins when you facilitate our programs for small companies should be around 80 to 90%. Okay. If you're charging a per person fee, okay? And that's the easiest way. But so first, you got to go through the program. Underline it, highlight it, get to know the product. Secondly, take the brochure. Read the brochure four, five, six, seven times. Underline it, have all the key benefits down. And then when you go out and make a presentation, bring your product with you in a very attractive carrying case. No paper bags. No paper boxes, no ugly suitcases, okay? Um, and, and that's how you present. So I'm John Scholl. Uh, you know, you can access me anytime, but I have uh, Brooke and I have uh, Carmen and I have Marina and we got Murtasa, a lot of people around the world that are help, willing to help you be successful. Again, if you're successful, we're successful. Thank you very much.